In some of your community news today, each month we get the chance to sit down with Chattanooga Fire Chief Phil Hyman and talk a little bit about what's going on in the city of Chattanooga. Today we are learning more about the training that the cadets go through. He is joining us now. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks so much for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what happened yesterday. Um, you know, devastation up at the Ocoee with the Whitewater Center. It seems like that building went up very fast, a lot of memorabilia in there, very devastating for that community. Yeah, it is unfortunate for that community. We always hate to see an iconic piece like that uh, get destroyed by fire. Um, and it was probably a very overwhelming fire for that department. Just unfortunate to see. It is, it is. And we've had fires here in our area too as well that you all have been working through. I know that you guys do a lot of training. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about some of the training for the cadets, specifically the hazardous materials operations that folks may not realize here in our area. Right. Uh, they just got done with an 80 hour class on hazardous materials to learn how to deal with leaks of solid liquids and gases and all the transportation stuff that is carried through our community and how to deal with it and how to mitigate it and do it safely to not hurt other people and, and resolve a situation quickly. So a lot of folks would not realize how much goes up and down the highways here mm -hmm. um, and how you all are out on the scene for a lot of these tractor trailers that may spill some of these, these things. Also, let's talk about survival training and what they go through with that. So uh, we started a push for our firefighters a number of years ago to learn how to do fire ground survival. And that's when a firefighter gets in trouble on their own um, and has to get their get themselves or self rescue them uh, out of a building. Um, and it's very difficult to rescue a firefighter out of a building. It takes a lot of firefighters to rescue one that, are, that is down just because all the gear and the entrapment hazards and that. But every one of our firefighters has been through what we call the fire ground maze or it's an obstacle course basically where they're, they're blacked out, they're wearing their airpiece and they're wearing all their gear and they have to go through specific obstacles and have to complete the drill to be able to do that. And all of our firefighters have made it through it. How demanding is that for someone? It, it's very demanding. Uh, uh, it's very demanding. Our young ones do really well with it. Um, uh, and, but uh, as we get a little bit older, it makes it really challenging, kind of sets the bar uh, kind of high for all of our firefighters to be able to do that. And it's a survival skill. Um, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a thing to help protect them uh, when things go bad. Absolutely. Also, let's talk a little bit about extrication training. Uh, you know, when when you're saving folks in, in accidents, you know, mm -hmm. really serious accidents, sometimes it's minutes or seconds to get them out. Right. Talk to us a little bit about some of that training. Uh, our squad trainings, our squad uh, folks, uh, we have five squads in the city that are specifically designed to do nothing but extrication training on top of all the other duties that they do. And they train extremely hard on learning all the new techniques and all the techniques that have to do uh, to remove somebody from a vehicle. And there's lots of hazards associated with that. Electric vehicles are an issue for us. Um, and, and vehicles uh, every every accident is different, so they have to train uh, accordingly to make sure that they can adapt and problem solve when they do have those risks. Because it, it does matter. Uh, time is in the essence, so we've got to get the individual to a hospital quickly. Uh, so they have to be very skilled. Uh, so we do a lot of training around that. You talked a little bit about electric vehicles, and I've heard mm -hmm. this in the past that it is harder for firefighters to be able to put out that fire in some of these vehicles. Why is that? It, it's just the lithium ba batteries that are in them. Uh, they will reignite. You can put them out once, and then they'll, they'll still stay charged and we'll uh, reignite again. It's just something we have to pay attention to as our business evolves to what technology puts out there. Uh, we have to adapt to it as well. How much longer do these cadets have to go through training? How much longer do they have? Uh, they graduate late June, so uh, well, I know they're getting excited. Uh, we're just getting into some of the heavy stuff now. They just climbed the aerial, the 105 wow. foot aerial. Uh, they're doing forcible entry this week and then uh, search and rescue. So uh, they're about to see some smoke and fire inside of a building and learn how to do all that next. Absolutely. If there's folks at home, maybe they know somebody that wants to be part of the Chattanooga Fire Department. Not right now, but maybe in a couple of months. How do they get some more information? Chattanooga.gov. Uh, just go to Chattanooga.gov and go to the fire tab and there's an application process right there. Start that and then we'll, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Thank you Chattanooga Fire Chief Phil Hyman for joining us and what you all do each and every day to try to keep us safe Thank here you, in okay. the Tennessee, Tennessee Valley. All right, we have much more ahead on News 12 now this morning. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this.